Welcome again, everybody, to the Tag Gear Podcast. I'm Ray Ray. And I'm Dave. And we've got a really awesome discussion to cook up tonight with our buddy, Dr. Sonny Hernandez. We haven't had him on in a while. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How about you? Doing all right. So, Dr. Hernandez, uh, you really were probably our first, what we would consider, big guest on our podcast. So, you hold that position, by the way. Uh, so just want to thank you again for coming on. Uh, we're really excited, man. Oh, likewise. Always so, an honor to be here with you all. We're privileged and honored to get to be the moderators of your debate between you and Aaron Brummett with mm-hmm. the proposition, uh, does the Bible teach that Jesus Christ died for all men without exception? Uh, before we jump into the debate, kind of give us a little catch up. It's probably been about a year or longer yeah. since we've had you on the program. Could you tell us a little bit about what Reforming America Ministries is doing and uh, some of your other work? Absolutely. The ministry that I lead, Reforming America Ministries, is an apologetics ministry. And with this ministry, I spend a lot of time mostly writing soteriological works, mostly mm-hmm. in regard to essentials of the Christian faith. Also, I've spent a lot of time writing on subjects such as professing atheism, Roman Catholicism, Islam, and I've also had the privilege to have multiple debates thus far and have been, you know, again, privileged to be able to to spend time at conferences and, and meeting a lot of solid Christian friends throughout the years. Yeah, so like say within the past year, which one's been your most favorite debate so far? The most favorite debate I would have to argue would be a debate I had not long ago on the atonement, and that Mm. was in South Carolina. And that's when I debated an Emeraldian Mm. and on the on the subject of the scope of the atonement. Okay. And it was able a great opportunity for me to clarify and to help to really shed some light on some what I believe are some infamous, you know. presuppositions that individuals may have on the subject of limited atonement. Mm-hmm. And so that gets right into... Yeah, so that talk. brings us yeah. right into kind of the proposition for the debate. But before we jump there, I wanted to say, you know, you've debated in South Carolina, you debated in Texas, your infamous debate against Leighton Flowers. Yes. Uh, I'll never forget calling you on the phone like two days afterwards and being like, brother, thank you for bringing it. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I still feel that way. Um, some people need to put that guy in his place, and I mean that, like, in a Christian way, um, very seriously. Um, but why Springfield, Missouri? Great question. I would say Springfield, Missouri, because the gentleman that I am debating is going to be a pastor in the local community. And he and I are actually going to have a debate this week. Oh, he wow, and I okay. are going to debate the topic, and we're going to... Kind of a, I guess you could say it was a form of respect to say, listen, you know, there's obviously several uh, topics that he and I could debate on, which I believe are irreconcilable. And I don't say that to imply that somehow it's going to be some, you know, disrespectful dialogue between the two of us. No, it, what I mean by irreconcilable is that, you know, I believe that my worldview and my theological convictions are diametrically opposed to his. And I do not believe his position on the or on the view on the decree of God is at all compatible with the Bible. Nor do I believe it's remotely even near being commensurate with Scripture. Um, so I believe it's antithetical. So because of that, we've agreed to have a debate and the topic of theological determinism, which we're going to debate this Saturday in a church in Cincinnati, Ohio. And additionally, I told him, I said, if you're kind enough to come all the way out here from Missouri to Cincinnati, I'll go to where you're located at. And he's in Springfield, Missouri. He's a pastor there at a local congregation somewhere, and I'm not 100% sure what the name of his church is. Lighthouse I just know he is, uh, Anabaptist. Lighthouse hmm. Anabaptist Lighthouse. Church. That's about right. That sounds about right. And he also leads a ministry called Repentance Cry Ministry, so he spends a lot of time doing uh, 
you know, open their ministries. And mm-hmm. so I figured it'd be a good opportunity for him and I to have that debate. So that's what brings me down to Springfield, Missouri. All right. So you said you're so you you're debating him on the 14th, and that's the one that Dave and I are going to be moderating. Now, uh, you said that you're going to debate him also this week. Yes, this coming okay. Saturday we're also going to be debating. Okay. In Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. And so, okay. All right. And what and what is that proposition on that one? The topic is is theological determinism biblical. Okay. All right. And is is that going to be on Facebook Live, YouTube, or anything? It, it sure will. It's going okay. to be, my guess, it we're going to have a live piece for it, and it's going to be an early debate. It's going to be Saturday from 2 o'clock till 4. Okay. Well, uh, that's something that we uh, will definitely push out to the listeners because I'll be like a good, if you're debating the same guy, um, especially you guys uh, listening to the program, um, you know, get to know him before you actually get to meet him uh, live here in Springfield, too. So this will be, you know, there'll be a progressive um conversation going on between these two going into if you go out to the library center on the 14th with that with that debate too so that's that's awesome so sunny i know you've received a lot of feedback from some of your other debates that you've done uh and people have probably been pretty uh, negative towards uh, a few of your debates i know a lot of folks attacked you after your debate with leighton flowers um which was odd of people to do that but when it comes to debating, uh, why do you spend all of this energy and time traveling all over the United States to debate people? Like, why is it an important thing, and why should Christians be paying attention to this? I think most important. that's a great question. Most importantly, to declare the true gospel. That's what I really, truly believe. And you're right. It was interesting after that debate. It was awkward because I find it interesting how a lot of these so-called Calvinists that were indignant with how I debated with Leighton Flowers, they acted kind of like, I guess you could say, the way Hillary Clinton's supporters acted when she lost the presidency to Donald Trump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't honestly know why and what caused all this. I mean, a lot of it is the downgrade of so-called Calvinism today. Yeah. So, yeah. And in regards to that specific debate, why do I travel? And again, the Internet today, there is this proliferation of liberalism and it's retreating debates today as if it's like some conciliatory matter Mm -hmm. or it's this argument that well you know you know we're just going to treat the doctrines of grace like they're secondary issues and you know you can disagree with it if you want and you know you're still my brother and my response is no if you reject the doctrines of grace i'm going to evangelize you i'm going to preach to you and i'm going to love you and i'm going to pray for your salvation and I'm going to, you know, lead you to the truth if it be the Lord's will. I said, but I'm not going to sit there and regard you as a brother, because to call someone a brother is to tell them they affirm the same gospel as you. Hmm. When if you think about it, if you look at the concept of Arminianism, or commonly known as semi-Pelagianism, and compare that with the truth of the doctrines of grace, they're both diametrically opposed. Yeah. We Amen. affirm, we affirm again, total hmm. depravity. A man is... Mm-hmm is utterly indisposed, disabled, made opposite of all good. They don't believe in total depravity. Even if they tell you they do, they don't. Because they believe in what's called partial inability, since they affirm this libertarian or contra-causal freedom notion that one can exercise their depraved and frail free will to accept God uh, on that basis. And clearly, you know, they, they don't believe in unconditional election. I had a debate recently, and about a month and a half ago, on the topic of election, they'll tell you, oh, we believe in election. Oh, the Calvinists, again, is lying about us. We believe in election. No, they don't. They believe in what's a term called conditional election. In other words, they believe that God had to foresee your faith or disbelief, and then he saves you on that basis in lieu of Mm -hmm. his immutable will and grace. And so there's a big, significant difference right there, and that's why when we debated the terms, like when you bring up the, the, the Greek, the word uh, proegno, then that word in Romans 8, and I always ask people, what's the object of the verb? Remember, proegno in Romans 8 is the verb. What's the object of the verb? It's not one's actions or some positive quality that exists inside of them that God must praise and not condemn. It's men, not actions. Mm-hmm. So to say that God has to save us on the basis of conditions that one must meet is heresy. And then lastly, I'll just bring up the atonement. I mean, that's just one of the most significant 
topics in the Bible, and I ask everybody, listen, what is the citadel of your faith? What is the object of your faith if not the gospel? And when you say the gospel, how can anyone deny that the gospel doesn't mean good news and that is inextricably linked with the death of Christ? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, the death of Christ is good news. The death of Christ is the gospel. But you can't just sit there and say, well, Jesus died. Well, Jesus died for who? Well, Mm -hmm. here's the reality of why a debate like this is so significant, because today, moderate Calvinists regard the atonement as just a point. In other words, it's like letting your little kid go out and play basketball. Oh, he scored a point his little buddy. Oh, great. Here's some points. Well, the doctrine of the race is more than just points. Mm-hmm. It's essential of the Christian faith, because if an individual says, Christ died for all, well, then I'm going to ask them, okay, then how come all are not saved, redeemed, reconciled? How come all do not have the righteousness of Christ imputed to their accounts? How come all do not have the gift of saving faith? Oh, I get it. Christ's death was just made it potential for people to be saved. Oh, it's just a hypothetical atonement. Mm-hmm. Oh, he just, you know, made salvation possible. That's not good news. That's horrible news. There's no assurance of your salvation, and it makes salvation contingent upon a frail and depraved sinner. Whereas opposed, if we take a look at the doctrine of particular redemption or plenteous redemption, I say, Christ died for the elect, and guess what? All the elect are saved, redeemed, reconciled. Amen. He mm-hmm. has redeemed us mm-hmm. from the curse of the law, the powers of death, the thraldom of Satan, and, and that one drop of his blood was wasted, and each and every one of them are infallibly secured in their salvation. There's good news. So that's yeah. essentially yeah. why a debate like this is so significant, and I don't downgrade the doctrine of the atonement just because some popular apologists or you know, it. You know, a lot of a, more of these so-called what I would just I don't know this this moderate Calvinist movement today, man. It's just to me disgusting because it basically treats doctrine today like. And their biggest argument today is, oh, well, you don't have that perfect knowledge. Well, no one's arguing perfect knowledge. That's a horrible argument. I, I, the only person that has perfect knowledge is is the Lord. Mm-hmm. But the point that be made about this topic is the fact that, you know, if one doesn't believe in the gospel, and if they don't understand it, then, you know, love them. Warn them. Show them what the truth is. The simple passages of the Bible, when Jesus himself had said, I gave my life for the sheep. And he told the Pharisees, he told those religious leaders, you don't believe because you're not my sheep. So if he says you're not my sheep, and then he tells the sheep that you're, you know, I gave my life for the sheep, there should be so simple, even a child can understand it. So if someone hears that, again, the true sheep of God will hear their voice, hear the voice of the Savior, and they will follow him. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's the distinction of why a, a debate like this is significant. So I have yeah. two little pieces, and I don't want to mm-hmm. cut you off, Adam. Anyways, right, I know, fine. like, I'm always grateful to get to talk to you because I feel like every time I talk to you, I, I'm learning, and I know that at the debate, I will have a great time learning. But uh, why an Anabaptist, and what's the deal with an Anabaptist? Yes. I mean, give me a little bit of history, because most individuals have never even heard of an Anabaptist church. They'd be like, what in the world is that? So kind of give me, if you don't mind, just a little bit of background on Anabaptist theology, if if you know a little bit off the top of your head, and you know, I'm sure you've done more research than I have, but like, mm-hmm. why is this a big point of contention between a Baptist and an Anabaptist? Well, let me just share this with you. In regards to this young man, first of all, he's a very kind young man. Um, he's he's always been very polite, and he's been a gentleman, and, and I've tried to reciprocate the same. But in regards to his convictions on this matter, the only thing I know for certain of is he doesn't agree with my position. Obviously, he's wanting to debate. Hmm. Um, and the reality is this is what the Bible teaches. The point of discussion in, in regards to my theological convictions and his theological convictions is not to say, okay, I'm going to share with you my beliefs, and you're going to share me your beliefs, and then people can choose. No, the Bible is already distinctively Amen. clear, yeah. and it's so pervasive. There is, it's irrefutable evidence, and not one person can thwart that or say to God you know, that there is a possibility that it's not true. No way. Mm-hmm. But in regards to Anabaptist theology, what— the goal of this debate, again, is I'm not debating him, and I honestly don't care what Anabaptist theology is. The only thing I know is that it denies, and the way he's going to present it is not, again, what what's conducive with the Bible. 
So yeah. that's the only thing I can tell you is that well, the way he's going to present it, of course, is going to be typically the, the Christ died for all men without exception, head for head, soul for soul, for each and every single person that has ever lived in the entire cosmos. Um, and that's fine. And that's his position. And again, that's where he's going to have to be cross-examined. He's going to have to be, you know, asked a lot of pertinent questions and be held accountable to the exegesis. And likewise, I'll do the same. Yeah. So like uh, in the contract you sent to me, and I, and I hope it's okay that I, you know, uh, will look at it just a little bit, looking at some of the format, like one of the things that I think is extremely interesting about this is you have basically a 25 minute both of you have 25 minutes to cross-examine each other. Like, why that mm -hmm. format? I'll tell you why. One of the main reasons why. I've been in enough debates now, and I can tell you right now, one of the things that I'm that just, it's getting old, is I have to sit back and watch someone read from a stack of notes the whole time. Mm -hmm. And anybody can get up and preach a sermon. Anyone can stand up and read a lecture. But again, what it takes is the cross-examination time where, you know what, now you're going to have to speak extemporaneously. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have to respond to the exegesis. Now you're going to have to respond to the arguments that are being broached. And that's where you're not going to have a speck of notes to look at. And that's why I tell everybody, it's I'd rather spend more time doing cross-examination. Personally, I would rather just have debates where it's nothing but cross-examination. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it opens up more opportunity where you can show someone their folly. I really mm -hmm. believe that is personally the, one of the most important ways that I would really love to personally ask. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's great because I know, and, and this is one of the things that just from the debates that, that I've watched and from the debates I've been fortunate enough to, to get to participate in, you can tell when an individual knows Scripture yeah. and they're able to unpack Scripture. Uh, I just think of what I think is probably one of the best evidences of this is, of course, your debate with Leighton Flowers, James White's debate with Leighton Flowers, it was clear they could not work out of the text. Yeah. Their arguments could not be made from the text and the text alone. And that just blows my mind that that, that is, to me, at least the clearest indication that you're working from tradition and not from the, the hard work of exegesis. Yeah, yeah. And, and this debate... Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of it, too, is a lot of philosophical claptrap, if you mm -hmm. ask me. You ever notice one thing is that anytime you debate a semi-Pelagian like Leighton or any other Arminian that you want to, um, you know, wrestle with theologically, you'll notice that they ask a lot of hypotheticals. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, first yes. of all, I don't. I, my response to them is, why don't? Why do you keep running to hypotheticals, and why don't you go to the Bible? We're here to debate the topic of the Bible. That's what we agree to. Now it would be incumbent upon you to go to the Bible and ask me a question about the Bible so we can debate the Bible. But mm. they use hypothetical situations somehow, in other words, to exonerate and to prove some kind of logical argument, but they don't. They have to grasp the concept again, is that it's about what the Bible teaches. There's so many supernatural things in the Bible, and there's things that people don't realize. I'll give you an example. Someone said recently, they had asked uh, the, the, the question, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would God choose this person, not that person? And why would God reprobate someone? Well, I think the Bible is very clear why God would reprobate. Mm -hmm. It tells us, and in fact, it tells us in Romans 9, it says, for this reason, you know, I've raised thee up, that I may show my power in thee. That's number one. Yeah. And number two, in Romans 9, he also makes it abundantly clear when he says, that he uses the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction in order that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. So those are a couple of solid reasons why God were to reprobate the wicked. But the reality is that my plagues and Arminians just don't like it. It's not good enough for them that mm -hmm. God does something for his glory or that God does something to make his name known. Yeah, yeah, and it so, usually yeah, ends up in uh, just because they don't have the Trinity right, even though they're Trinitarians, so that you know they're trying to keep God from being selfish, yet they're forgetting that the Trinity is the only, uh, you know, the only intelligible argument for selfless love. So, <laughs> well, I'd also but, argue too. Yeah. I take it a step further and say I don't believe they're Trinitarian at all. Yeah. Now anybody can posit the idea that okay. We believe in there's one God who's manifested in three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But hold on a minute. It's a great let's starting place. Let's take a look place. at the gospel. Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at the gospel. 
Yeah. The gospel we believe in is not a Unitarian gospel, it's a Trinitarian gospel. Exactly. So when you say things like chosen by the Father, redeemed by the Son, sealed by the Spirit, now here's the problem. They don't believe chosen by the Father. Yeah. In other words, when I say chosen by the Father, I'm arguing that before the foundation of the world, he literally, not figuratively, ordained the salvation of his particular people. Mm-hmm. Okay? Therefore, this rules out the whole prescience view, the argument that, you know, a forcing faith or disbelief. Number two, Christ doesn't if Christ were to purchase literally salvation for each and every single person, what he's doing is something in opposition of what his father had given to him. In John 6, when it says, all that the father gives me will come to me, will ask. Yeah. Who is the father given to the son? Is he given to the son uh, head for head, soul for soul, each and every single person that has ever lived in the entire cosmos? Of course not. Mm-hmm. He's giving to the son only his chosen and particular people. Exactly. Now, to say that Christ died for more than that, or that Christ had a different desire, in other words, his intent was not the Father's intent, is to show that there's not, the the operation and latitude of the Godhead is not equal. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it's just, it's it's lazy in a way. It's, uh, it's one of those things that can continue to wrestle against feelings, and that's basically where the argumentation lies every time I, I, I've I hear anything and it's almost I'm glad that you're debating it because I almost get in despair talking with people on yeah. that on, on the atonement because it's like you're just yeah well, you're just not getting it but I'll continue right. but and it's, and it's a great topic yeah <laughs> yeah so I mean this one's a in, I'll encourage you guys in your community I'll invite them all go to oh, every yeah. semi plaguean church in the community and say hey come on <laughs> let's go well the cool and thing is the out there, so, I, so I what's the name of your de- what's the deba- the name of your opponent again Aaron um, Brummett. Aaron Brummett. Okay, and this, this this is the guy that comes downtown Springfield, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and so a lot of people in this area are very familiar. I'm a guy that every once in a while goes and plays the show downtown, you know. So I hear him. I sit out there, and there's there's a few things that I've seen and I've heard, you know, that I really want to talk to him, but unfortunately, they're doing all the talking and they don't actually let people talk. Um, mm. they're also, he's also has, a, has minions going around handing out cards. They don't talk mm-hmm. to people. It's just like, here you go, serve yourself, which is really a result of their theology. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it's one of those things. So Springfield, you know, this guy, that's right. And you see him downtown. And the thing is, is, you know, I want, we, we should love him again. He's, you know, we, we should show him grace enough to give him the gospel. Ooh. Um, but there are some issues that he's going downtown Springfield and preaching, and that's what and that's what, uh, the people downtown Springfield are getting that word. Yeah. And so then they're going to come to your church and they're going to hear this, but then then you're going to preach this, and then that's going to cause a nice rift in attention. And so we need this. This is a special debate that you need to come to because this is where a lot of things are going to land and then jump out of an action. Yeah. And here's the thing, Sonny. I actually am friends with a guy who was a part of his church at one time and left and became uh, a a Calvinist, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he left Aaron's church and uh, doesn't go. He does. He attended my church for a while, but he found a, a church that was a little bit closer to where he and his family lived and started attending there. And so uh, he was part of what Aaron Brummett, uh, that gospel, that false gospel that they teach there. And thank God, by his grace, it was, again, the doctrines of grace that led him out of that group. Um, so I wish um, I'm going to invite him to the debate. I don't know if he'll come, but uh, he uh, he was very serious in with those folks at Lighthouse Anabaptist. So um, really looking forward to that. And like I said, anyone who goes downtown knows who this guy is. They yeah. know their people. It's a powerful ministry. So besides having you on the podcast, are there other things that we can do to try to reach out to others to get them to come? Uh, what can we well, do from our side? What can our question. audience the, do? The first thing I would just ask is there at the library, I would do everything in your power if you can have a flyer actually with the, if the library would allow you to post mm-hmm. flyers there in the library so maybe okay. individuals can come because i know the community there probably tends to visit that library often i don't know if oh, that's yeah. a possibility um but that would be a great marketing tool right there and if there's any way to randomly like personalize an email and you know kind of very respectfully in your own 
way of explaining things, email some of these semi-Pelagian pastors and say, hey, listen, I'm sure you guys probably are known for, you know, articulating a lot of messages against Calvinism, or as you'd like to call it, or yeah. against the doctrines of grace. Well, now's your chance. <laughs> Why not yeah. come? Yeah. And Won't we have a come? gentleman that's actually coming to debate, and guess what? He'll answer any one of your questions publicly. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. nothing you can't ask him, and he won't answer. If you want to talk about the Bible, and you want to bring up a passage that you believe teaches, again, a universal atonement, uh, the so-called hypothetical uh, uh, atonement of Christ, then by all means, come. Well, and, you know, and yeah. so I'm not running from the debate topic. I'm willing to travel anywhere around the country to debate the topic. Now, I'm, cu I'm curious about something, Sonny. Uh, have you had a debate with a Molinist by any chance? No, I would love to have one, though. I do know a Molinist who I have a friendship with who lives in Kearney, Nebraska, uh, Tim Stratton. He's been on Leighton Flowers' podcast. So he's also, might... I think he also works with uh, Cross Examined as well. Yeah, he's so. done some work with Cross Examined as well. Um, sharp guy, uh, graduate, uh, he's good friends with Mike Lycona as well. And so it kind of lets you know the crowd that he runs with. Uh, nice, very nice guy, very friendly guy. Been very kind to me. Uh, really do. Uh, met him when I was when I was sixteen at a camp, and have remained in contact with him. Uh, and I know he's a Molinist. His doc doctorate degree, uh, his PhD dissertation, I believe, was basically. If it, I don't know that it's gotten published yet, but it's a. Basically, he argues that. Uh, Molinism is true Calvinism. He follows <laughs> Kenneth Keatley's uh, argument. Yeah, yeah, salvation and sovereignty. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you've read Salvation and Sovereignty. Um, I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I, I don't know if he'd accept it, but let me tell you, I'm not running. Yeah, I, right. I, I will reach you out to, to him to try to set something up. Um, I know that be you both would have to travel if we did it in Springfield, uh, and I don't know mm -hmm. that Springfield would be the best. Um, the best place, but if I could in any way, you know, connect you with him and he would agree, you know, I know you'd go to the Kearney to Kearney, Nebraska is a neat, not Kearney. Um, where is it? I, Sounds right. I can't remember if he, I think he's in, yeah, he's in Kearney, Nebraska, beautiful town, actually, if you've never been there. Um, but, uh, he's, you know, a really, really great guy and, uh, certainly someone that would be, um, a good opponent. And I think that you would do a great job with him. So yeah, yeah, I'd appreciate the the recommendation. I don't know who this gentleman is. I'll I'm connect sure you with him, nice brother. I will connect and, you with him certainly. If he is, if he if he certainly would be interested in, I'll tell you what. The best way to explain it is: listen, if you're really certain about your position, then by all means, I would love to challenge him. I understand Molinism well, and I I can tell you right now, um, no, it, it is not. Uh, I'm not well, maybe maybe a liberal Calvinism, sure. I have had fun at that topic. <laughs> um, but certainly not his certainly certainly not biblical Calvinism. There's it couldn't no be way. historical Calvinism either, mm -hmm. by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because I mean, just Calvinism in my worldview is only just a nickname. I don't even yeah. Yeah. preferably I, I'm trying to get away from even using it. Yeah, I believe yeah. vehemently in the doctrines of grace. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe these are essentials of the Christian faith. Again, I don't believe that one has to have a perfect knowledge. And, you know, if one doesn't be able to articulate, like, what a scholar presents upon the doctrines of grace, therefore they're not saved. I don't believe that. And I believe very distinctly that these are the truths of the Bible. And, again, I believe that if you hear the truth of the Bible, okay, I believe exactly what takes place in John. In mm -hmm. the Gospel of John, remember when it says, my sheep hear my voice? Yes. And he says, and I know them, and he says, they follow me. Yeah. You know, so... The true sheep of God hear the voice of their Savior, by the way, who preached on the doctrines of grace. Yes. Isn't it amazing how when Christ preached on election, he was not shy about preaching on election. Just read Luke 4. <laughs> yeah. Luke 4, after he had read Scripture, right? The book of Isaiah. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, and me to preach good times before the healed of brokenhearted. Everybody was rejoicing at the wondrous words that were coming off his lips, but he immediately mm -hmm. preached on the doctrine of election. Mm -hmm. And they're ready to throw them off a cliff. Yep. Yeah. So no wonder today why so many guys are a little skittish on preaching election. They know it's going to upset a lot of people. And the same thing you're going to find in John 6. Yeah. In John 6, when he said that it's the spirit who gives life, the flesh is no help at all, and no one comes to us, the Father who sent me draws him. Yeah. Then they were ready to follow him no more. 
So these passages are meant to show us that Jesus Christ was not ashamed to preach uh, the truth, and therefore we shouldn't be either. And as a result, this is why we stand on the bedrock of our faith and to say that the gospel, there's essentials of the gospel, man. And when you can't just, you know, mitigate the gospel by just saying, 1 Corinthians 15, no, don't get me wrong, 1 Corinthians 15 has a summarization of the gospel. He died, buried, and resurrected, but here's the problem. By just saying, you know, Christ died, buried, and resurrected, why, why, are, you, why are you trying to shy from describing the content of that, though? Yeah. Amen. First of all, if a Roman Catholic hears 1 Corinthians 15, they're going to say, Amen, brother. In fact, <laughs> a Unitarian and a Jehovah Witness and a Mormon, if they hear you say, 1 Corinthians 15 is the gospel, oh, amen, mm-hmm. brothers. Mm-hmm. I agree yeah. with you. I agree with you. But the moment you explain to them that Jesus who died, it was for the elect and not for head for head, soul for soul, for everyone that has loved and lived in the entire cosmos. Well, by the way, that Jesus who died and was buried, Guess what? He died for those whom the Father gave him before the foundation of the world, the elect. Oh, I don't believe in that. Oh, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. You'll clearly weed out false converts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to merely just rely on a passage of Scripture and proof text it without any content, in my opinion, is typically made by individuals that are ashamed of the truth. Well, Paul brazenly proclaimed predestination and the doctrines of grace in its entirety. Paul was an ardent predestinarian, mm. and he made no, no apologies, nor should any Christian offer an apology when you preach the truth in love, and you're just proclaiming the Bible for exactly what it explicitly and pervasively teaches. Amen. Okay? That's all we have to do. I'm not I'm in any way making the argument that Christians should go out and just say things deliberately to incite another person or to bombast somebody or just to do something to get a reaction, those individuals are typically your false converts. I'm arguing that you preach the truth because you legitimately believe that the doctrines of grace are essentials of the faith, and when the Word of God is preached, it will subdue a man, drive him out of himself, and conform to the image of God if it be the will of the Father. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that's, I mean, that's a big amen for me. But uh, yeah, anyway, so guys, um, or do you have another question? No, no, you're good, good, good. All right. I was going to say, I mean, I think we've exhausted it. I think, uh, you know, this debate's going to be a fun one, especially for here in Springfield between the two, especially Aaron B. and the guy that uh, is very well known um, for preaching, uh, especially the air preaching downtown um, and everything. So again, everybody, this is on March 14th at the Library Center here in Springfield, Missouri, in the auditorium. That's 4653 South Campbell Avenue, um, 65810. So, um, guys, come out. We'll get the flyers. Um, We'll make sure that all the information gets out if uh, we can ask for your help on sharing it. And Um, Aaron is going to be creating some flyers. And, Sonny, if you get a chance to communicate with him, let him know. uh, You know, we're happy to share any of his flyers if he can send some of that stuff to us. Through Facebook, yeah, it'd be great. Will. Yeah, I so, most certainly will. Well, awesome. Well, dude, we look forward to uh, seeing you. I, I, I look forward to actually shaking your hand in person yeah. <laughs> for the first time. So we we'll finally get to oh, get to be around likewise. each other. So well, Adam doesn't go to my church, so you won't get to worship with him on Sunday. But uh, um, if you do choose to come to First Baptist Buffalo that Sunday, we'd love to have you. But um, uh, hmm. man, just so excited Where for you to go, get Adam? down. I go to Redeemer here in town. The Acts okay. twenty, it's an Acts twenty nine. Here in town. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, well, brother, we will let you go and look forward to communicating with you as dates get a little bit closer and uh, do what we can to work with you. Excited to get to um, host this or, excuse me, to moderate this and host it in our dear yeah. city. So, yeah. All right. Well, you nice, have a good man. night, Dr. It, Hernandez. Yeah, yeah. Anytime, likewise, Sonny. So. Well. All right. Okay. Talk, talk to you later. Oh, likewise. Bye. All right. Well, that's going to be an awesome debate, and I know uh, we've already given the details. So, I mean, there's really nothing more to say. Yeah. Uh, hey, so, this yeah. is great, brother. Uh, yeah. Three programs, one week. So, Travis Herinick will be coming back to fill my spot at some point. At yes. some point this month. So, yeah, yeah I'll, I'm sure he'll 
hook up with you on that. So. Yeah, we'll figure it out, and I think we've already kind of talked. We'll continue with the uh, discussion on um, Ear Biscuits Link. Yep, I think that's, that's exactly uh, what I think he's good continue to go those, with. Yeah. those parts and do some pre-sup, what's up, and we'll bring another person in on the conversation to uh, go over his story, um, to speak our story into his story, and hopefully, again, if you guys can share um, any of these things, especially that one, if uh, you're a fan, um, you know, maybe the more they hear from people people uh, especially people that are subscribed to them um, maybe they'll actually take notice I mean we're we're nothing we're just little guys out there in the YouTube and and podcast sphere um, <laughs> but you know it's you guys that could actually do something and share and let people know and then they might go hey these guys are sincere they're not gonna you know they're going to you know, again they're gonna borrow cap they're gonna be able to borrow capital from us and we'll give them grace to go here you go. And then we can ha maybe have some sort of story share. They can come on our podcast. We, we, we can go on their podcast too, but whatever, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not about fame, but it's about them and the gospel yeah, actually dealing so, with it. So. Yeah. So anyway, thank you guys uh, for being with us today. If you were, you know, part of the live casting and just getting inundated all day with tag your it stuff, you know, thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for being with us uh, in spirit and um, everybody that gets to download the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for and being likewise, part of this ministry. Be sure to give us, if you watch the live cast, be sure to give us some feedback. Feedback if you like the new format of us doing basically a day of episodes. Uh, tell us what you think about that. We had talked about this last year, kind of about going to this type of format and then having the podcast released kind of after that and then coming back. And so just kind of let us know what you think about that. Uh, always yeah. send us topics. We're always excited. And uh, send us requests for guests as well. We always enjoy knowing who you'd like to hear from. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, guests, memes, all that stuff. Let us know. We want to interact with you guys. So thank you again. So I guess with the Tag Your It podcast, I'm Ray Ray. And I'm Dave. And Soli. Deo. Gloria.